to us about this concept of a 15 minute city. What's involved in it and could it really be transported? It's really about people wanting to have more of their life more local. The first thing on my mind as we talk about this is how quickly can you rebuild a city to fit these criteria? The 15 minute city slogan catches the attention, but it's really about reconfiguring the city to make it more people centric. I think that's a very noble idea. And for me, it's, it's an old target that we've been chasing as cities. There are aspects of the 15 minute city that are praiseworthy, but the basic concept of a 15 minute city is not really a city at all. It, it's a concept of an enclave, of a ghetto, of an isolated neighborhood. I think the 15 minute city can't do well without having a different kind of approach of society. What is the worth of spending time with my family, spending time with me? It's not a new concept, but I would say that future has already existed in India. And it's something that we should be celebrating, saying we did right. And we should continue to do that right thing in the future. It's an important conversation that we, we need to be having on both fronts. One, what does it mean to improve our neighborhoods? And two, how do we make sure we're doing this in the fairest and most equitable way to undo the damage that our profession has done in the past? And I think those are hard conversations, but I think they're really important conversations. Some of the debate around the 15 minute city is really about its definition and the degree to which it's really a proposition which only treats accessibility at the very local scale and ignores the metropolitan, or an offer that complements metropolitan-wide accessibility by a much greater degree of local possibilities for accessing services, maybe also jobs and other opportunities. enjoy you know our uh, uh, new uh, local life for three uh, four days a week but we still have to travel to main activities uh, and we might travel farther away there would be like this uh, idea of a small uh, healthy neighborhood but then the city might actually be much much bigger than than it is now i think the volume of travel for work will decrease but not by very much and the volume of travel for leisure will increase and I think it might mean that people access the centre of cities three days a week, not five days a week. Accessing a city in South Africa is not a matter of choice, it's a matter of survival. If you want to survive, you have to be a city centre. Can we or should we design cities that have a lower degree of movement intensity? In many ways, sustainable urbanism and compact urban form is an answer that would say yes, it's important that we are overall reducing the need to travel, being closer together, having greater degree of integration, greater complexities and breeding through that better social relations. Thousands of years of human history tell us that there's a fundamental desire, whether we change our movement from work movement to leisure movement, there's a question, and what mode we're on. But the idea that people are going to move less because they're going to do things virtually, that has not been proven through you know many thousands of years of history. So we shouldn't be planning for that. The view that we can then duplicate real movement with uh, virtual movement is a fantasy for less well-educated members of this world we still need a lot of people to move to make this local life uh, happen.
open in terms of delivery uh, service, but also, you know, there will still be a lot of people who will actually uh, move around to make other people to stay local, not to move. If you think about some of the fundamental definition of a 50 minute walk or a 50 minute bike ride, you may have a territory which is in the region of one to four kilometers square. And if you take that in a proper urban dense environment, we may be talking about anything between 20,000 people to half a million people. And these are of course territories with enormous difference and also with enormously different opportunities to provide mix, social mix, and of course, in the end, opportunities for human well-being and for human engagement. A low-income adult wakes up in their small apartment and then they go to a job somewhere else. They find opportunity with people who are wealthier, with people who are better educated. They find possibilities. The child lives in a 15-minute city. The child lives in their housing project. They go to their highly segregated school. They live in a world that is no more integrated than a poor rural village. That's what I see. That's what I hear when I think about a 15 minute city. Right? I think about a world in which the rich have isolated themselves from the poor and the poor are cut off. We have in multiple uh, locations in India where you have extended geographies that work as a metropolitan area. And people do travel between these cities for work. But keep in mind that it's only one person in the family who might do that. The rest of the family does still live in a very small uh, diameter in the city. And therefore, I think it's a, it's, we certainly must look at these smaller areas. There is not a, a contradiction between the 50 minute city uh, access in the compact zone and the 30 minute territory for metropolitan areas. The hybridization is in reality the hybridization by the polycentric urbanism, the polycentric territoriality. We need to be looking at both of these scales and not just those scales but multiple scales at the same time where we can both zoom in and understand the very specific localized needs at the hyperlocal and understand the importance of being very strategic in terms of our growth and development or decline and the kind of efficiency of our broader transit systems. I can't imagine from, from the British perspective how you might possibly create a planning system that put into 15 minute areas of the city the, the diverse nature of, of the population in a way that would create equality. The danger is that what you create is a is a very large series of walled enclaves for the rich and huge deprivation for the poor. And I am very worried that a focus on enabling upper middle income people to walk around in their nice little 15 minute neighborhood precludes the far larger issue, which is how, the, how do we make sure our cities once again become places of opportunity for everyone? I am only interested in urban planning concepts that fundamentally solve that, and I cannot see how the 15-minute city does anything on that. There's a certain ghettoization that can happen, not because the rich and the poor do not live in proximity, but because of active measures by public agencies to relocate the poor. And I think that's something that we need to address. You know, in, in multiple cities, we've seen that rather than in-situ development for a variety of reasons, the poor have been relocated to ghettos uh, outside the city. So it, it's not so much a slum clearance program, but a slum relocation program, if you will. It just happens to be, you know, one slum to the other slum. And there, of course, there are issues because, uh, you know, people in such areas do not now have access to uh, jobs and they end up being forced to travel much longer distances. So I, I would certainly vote for uh, there being measures so that there is greater mix of income levels. I think it's really 
important to focus on on the areas which uh, already have uh, uh, lacking services and in the area which uh, services are there there are problems related to the diversity of, of people in any case so who need what what are the basic services uh, and this is something you know urban planners are asking themselves since probably the beginning of, of planning this is a new vision this is a new paradigm for uh, developing this uh, urban uh, polycentrism uh, based on the uh, social mixity and the mix of the urban functions and to protect people. In fact, if we want to, to fight against gentrification, we need to intensify the social uses, the social link, the new economic model, the new business model, and to deploy different the resources. And of course, we need to have a very, very important program of the social housing in the different districts. All cities should be archipelagos of neighborhoods, but those neighborhoods must be connected. Otherwise, they are not places of opportunity. If the city's dense enough, there are many places that you can walk to because there's so much going on. One of the obvious things to do is to move away from low density development on the outskirts of cities of several million and, and go back to density. I don't see a concern with mix of various kinds of activities, but income levels, I certainly think, is a, is a concern and uh, we need to fix it. We need to ensure that historically the way Indian cities were mixed into in multiple places, they continue to be so. The city is an environment to be in rather than to travel through. And that's a fundamental logic and also reminds us that the city in itself is a transport solution. It helps us create accessibility without the need to move over long distances. I think we lost many of our fantasy, many of our utopias. We don't have utopia at the moment, we have more like dystopia. I don't want the hyperloop and the flying taxis if you don't solve the problems on the ground at the moment. I think we're getting somewhere and I think some of those hard conversations are probably just at the beginning and I think it's important that we stick with it and we muddle through the hard things because we don't have the option of getting paralyzed to the point of inaction. These issues we're facing are just way too great.